Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm super pumped about this video because it's a series that I've been considering doing for such a long time. And if you watch my booktuber newbie tag, you know that I have a background in film. So I wanted to sit down and talk about books that I would like to adapt into movies or television series. So today's episode, I'm going to focus on one book in particular and then as the little series continues, I'll be going on to different books and things like that. So essentially, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to tell you the book, the synopsis, my cast, what I would do with it, what it's rated, and kind of the key points of what I would include and what I wouldn't include. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know what you think and if this is something you would like to see me continually do. I also am going to include kind of like a Pinterest aesthetics board, so I will link my Pinterest for my inspiration on this book below. So yeah, let's get into this video. The first book that comes to mind when I think like movie adaptation is none other than The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This book screams rom-com to me. I absolutely devoured this back in 2021 when I was getting back into reading again. And the minute like I started reading it, I was like, this is so rom-com coded. I would love to see this as a film one day. So that is why this is going to be the first book we focus in on uh, like in this little series. So if you haven't read The Love Hypothesis, it is about Olive Smith. She is a PhD candidate and she has this best friend who's like, girl, you need to get back out there. You need to start dating again. And she's like, yeah, I am. Like, I'm totally over my ex. Like, I'm seeing this guy, blah, blah, blah. And then her best friend happens to be working late at the same time Olive is at the lab when she told her she was going to be on a date. So Olive does the first thing, you know, that comes into brain that she thinks is perfectly reasonable. And she kisses the first man that she sees. That man happens to be Adam Carlson, who is the hotshot professor on campus that everyone categorizes as an a-hole, okay? And obviously, Olive has to explain herself, so when she sits down and talks to Adam, they kind of come up with this idea to fake date, and it benefits the both of them. So, you know, Adam has his reasons that you find out in the end of the book, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and... I think that if you're looking for a palate cleanser or something like that, this book is perfect. But I also think it's perfect for a movie. And that movie to me would be PG-13. And the reason is because there's like one super intimate scene in this book towards the end, but I feel like it's better off as a closed door, like fade to black scene in a movie. So obviously when they start to get more intimate, the scene would just fade to black because, you know, rom-coms are more light and fluffy and I feel like that's the whole like epitome of this book and that's why I would make it PG-13. So let's talk about the cast of this film. I did a deep dive. Like when I was coming up with this this video I was like I really need to put my thinking hat on and I need to find the perfect people for this book. And I did a lot of inspiration from the cover. So I took this cover and I was like okay who looks like these people? Who looks like them? So for Olive, I came up with Caitlin Dever. If you don't know who Caitlin Dever is, she was in Booksmart and she was also in like a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. She was also in a more serious kind of limited series on Netflix. And when I saw her in Booksmart, she plays like this super comedic, like awkward girl and she just eats up that role and Olive in this book is so incredibly awkward at points and I think that Caitlin Dever would play her perfectly not to mention like Caitlin Dever looks exactly like Olive on the cover I think so not only do I feel like they resemble each other I feel like based on what I've seen Caitlin Dever in she resembles Olive to me a lot so that's why I cast her as Olive. Next person that I cast was Adam Carlson. And if you know Allie Hazelwood, you know she talks all about how she pictured Adam Driver as Adam Carlson. And I feel like Adam Driver was a little bit too old to play this role. So I was like, let me find someone on the internet that looks sort of like Adam Driver that's an actor. So I found Jamie Blackley and I'm gonna insert these two photos of him. The more recent photo of him is this one where he's in the purple suit. This is like an older photo of him, but I feel like if 
you did the styling of him right to be like a combination of both of these he would be a perfect like adam carlson like i feel like he would look identical because i feel like the purple is too rugged but this one's too like hokator you know what i mean if you don't know who Jamie Blackley is, he was in If I Stay, so he definitely has a romantic background, and he recently was in a, a TV series, Becoming Elizabeth, he was in The Last Kingdom TV series, and I feel like he just looks the role so well, and he does have a decent acting background. I feel like when it comes to rom-coms, you kind of cast people that are not super popular, and have like and they kind of embody the role and that's how they get more gigs in the future so I definitely think he is fit for the bill the next person is Ayn Pham and that is Olive's best friend and when I read the book I was like oh Ayn's like super cute but she's also the person that's trying to convince Olive to date and get over her ex and like then Olive does this whole scheme with Adam Carlson so when I think of I'm, I'm like, oh, Lana Condor, especially since Lana has that background with To All the Boys I Loved Before, I feel like she would definitely embody it doing another rom-com role very well and fit that part super well. Next is Dr. Tom Benton, and Dr. Tom Benton is another doctor in this book. He comes in later in the book, but he's good friends with Adam Carlson, but he kind of, he's like how people think Adam is, he's like really, like he is like the a-hole, awful, sexist person. And I wanted like someone that when you looked at them, you're like, ugh. Like when I watched Game of Thrones, whenever I saw Joffrey Baratheon, I was just like, I can't stand him. I can't stand to look at him. I just like, and even after the series, if I just see that actor, I'm just like, like I'm seething and I wanted someone who kind of gave that like gave off the same vibe like oh you look at them you're like I just know this person is bad news so I feel like a lot of people might come for me for this one but I was looking for a blonde because that's how Dr. Tom Benton is described in the book and the one person that I've just been seeing all over social media right now is Leo Woodall and he played um, a character in One Day on Netflix, and obviously he probably plays a good guy in that show, I haven't watched it, but based on the pictures that I've seen of him on the internet, I'm like, he has a face that people could like strongly dislike if he like played a character so well, and given his performance and how everyone's talking about One Day on Netflix, I feel like he could definitely take on the role of pretending to be someone he's not and being like that sexist character. So that's why I casted him as that. The next character is Malcolm, which is another one of Olive's friends, and he ends up dating one of the other professors that's friends with Adam as well. And I would cast him as Jordan Fisher, and the reason behind that is because I feel like just his aesthetic and how he's described in the book, I'm like, oh, Jordan Fisher would like eat as that role like just based on looks but also because Jordan Fisher has a background in rom-coms so I think that he also would be able to play the part very well. So who I cast as Dr. Holden Rodriguez which is the man that Malcolm dates I casted Diego Bonita and he is from Scream Queens and After Midnights so he has a serious like role background and he also has that rom-com background so I think that based off the different actions and role that this character plays in the book he would be a good fit. This is all of my casting so now let's get into what I would include in the movie adaptation of the book and things that I would kind of leave behind. Okay let's talk about scenes that I would include. This book starts off with kind of like a flashback scene of Olive first doing the interview process of getting into school to be a PhD candidate. So I wouldn't necessarily put that as the beginning scene. I would incorporate that towards the end kind of as like a flashback of like a realization moment that um, that Olive has when Adam is telling her the truth behind why he decided to fake date her. So I would keep that later. I think like in a book it's important to have it in the beginning because you can connect the dots like in your brain. For a movie, it's more like you're visually watching and sometimes we don't have that big of an ex like attention span. So we kind of forget like that initial start of the movie. So I think that just having that flashback 
during the scene when Adam is telling the truth would come over like it would just come over well more than having it in the beginning and then you know including a scene in the later end like oh my gosh that's why that happened the way it did you were that person so I think that's how I would execute that as far as opening the film I definitely think it should begin with you know Olive in the lab super late at night she sees Ein and then she's like oh my gosh like she has a freak out and she kisses Adam I would keep that scene exactly how it is in the book because I was really really upset when I watched the adaptation of To All the Boys I Loved Before because in that Laura Jean kisses Peter in school like in the hallway not on the track. Was I like oh this is like detrimental like it ruins everything? No but I don't want to change like that initial like spark between them so drastically. I really want to keep it the same. You know? Another moment that I like would love to see in this movie was the scene where Olive goes to this like picnic little outing and Adam's there and she's like oh my god like he looks like that when he's shirtless and her best friend's like oh you should put like sunblock on him. I think that would be so funny and I think it's so like when I read that I was like that is so rom-com coded like it has to happen in a film because it's so like awkward and I feel like in a lot of rom-coms there's those cringy like awful like not I don't want to say awful but there's those super cringy like weird moments where you're like eh, but you're also like oh I kind of love it it's so fun and cute so I definitely think that should be added into it like I don't know I think it's fun I also definitely think that we should include like in the end of the book they go on this conference and Adam really pays attention to Olive and like when she doesn't eat what she does eat and like you know because as girls we forget to eat a lot so Adam notices that and he packs her favorite snacks and I feel like that's such a cute like it's a small detail but I think that it's one of those details that us as like an audience who loves rom-com like would eat it up so I want to include that and a hundred percent we have to include like the scene where Adam like barges in like on Olive and Dr. Tom Bitten and she's like you touch her like you die kind of thing like like we need that we need that in a rom-com I feel like we've never seen that and obviously it's not going to be like that aggressive it's a PG-13 rom-com but I think like we need to have that little possessive side of Adam like where he like kind of shoves him up the wall and like in his like puts him in his place. One of the things that I don't really want to include but I feel like just is like subtle but like I don't want it to be overdone because I feel like in the book it's very overdone and when Adam and Olive first start doing their little meetings she can't stop talking about pumpkin spice lattes and then like every time they go to Starbucks pumpkin spice latte this pumpkin spice latte that I feel like that doesn't need to be in the movie. I feel like if I could take it out and like replace it with something better I would. Like honestly I don't think it's needed at all. Obviously they have their little meetups at Starbucks but do we need all of that background pumpkin spice latte like cringy chatter? No. So I would just replace that. As far as the kind of ending of the film I would for sure shoot the scene where Olive is giving her research report. She's recording it from both her phone and we're gonna have like the actual camera shot but I think it would be super cool and interesting to incorporate a POV from the cell phone itself and then we can use that POV like shot from the camera of the cell phone showing it to Adam and her friends to actually reveal the truth of what Dr. Tom Benton did like when he forced himself on her and threatened her and things like that. So I think it would definitely be super cool to cut between those two angles during the main part of the scene and then include that footage later on in the film when she reveals the truth to her friends and Adam. Another thing that would be really interesting to include in this movie is I know that the book starts off with that flashback of Olive when she first interviews for going to the school and I was talking in the beginning of this that I wouldn't necessarily include it as like the first shot of the movie. I would just kind of go into her kissing Adam and things like that but I think that it could be interesting to bring that in kind of 
from Adam's point of view, like kind of him struggling with telling the truth of his intentions on fake dating Olive and kind of have that in the back of his mind and his character as the movie progresses. And then we could get like little bits of the flashback from both of them and during their struggles like throughout the movie and then at the end when Adam reveals his true intentions for Olive that's when we get that full flashback scene and it's that huge like oh my gosh like it was him the entire time kind of thing so I think that's kind of how I would implicate that flashback because obviously that is such a huge part of the book and the main reason why Adam did what he did and yeah, I think that's how I would go about doing that and have that big reveal at the end of like the full flashback. So yeah, that is kind of an overview of how I would go about the film itself. And I know it's a little bit all over the place. I was just talking and I definitely in the future want to be more organized and thorough with what I see in these adaptations and in these videos but if you have any other suggestions on how I should execute this um, it would be totally helpful um, I definitely want to make it more professional so any suggestions please leave them in the comments also comment below if you agree with my casting or if you have any thoughts about how you would adapt this into a film or TV show so this was so much fun and hopefully I can continue to do these in the future I want to just focus in on one book per video and really really do my research and not just talk at you this entire time so that was my bad but I had a lot of promise like I didn't realize until I actually sat down to film this that I was like wow I really should have thought this through more but I wanted to be like transparent and tell you that I, I filmed the whole entire video with three books and I narrowed it down to one which is the love hypothesis but again in the future I want to execute this a lot better so that's how I'm going to do the next episode and I'm going to plan it <laughs> accordingly but anyway thank you so much for sticking with me through this video I know it was kind of all over the place so again let me know any ways I can make this better for viewers and I will talk to you all in my next video